Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at some new tips and tricks for your TouchOSC template. Now we've done these types of videos in the past, so you should be familiar with this. We're just going to go through a couple interesting ideas for your template. And there have been a lot of updates with TouchOSC Mark II since it came out a few years ago. Uh, so let's take a look at one of the most recent updates, which was, uh, I think, really great. So we're in TouchOSC, and I already have it linked up with my device. But we're going to go to Help, and then Examples, and let's add in this new one, Time and Battery. So you can see here on my template, it's all launched and working, uh, and the time is showing, and so is the battery which I am charging my battery. So it doesn't show anything on the desktop, but you can still edit some of this. Uh, and the great thing about this is you could add it into a template. So if you worked with Touch OSC 1, the original version, there was kind of a in-house battery detector shower thing in your template, which would be really useful. So it's great that they've added this back into the system as a really easy template to add in. So we're just gonna copy this and paste it in a template. So I'm gonna take the battery here, copy that, move over here, and then just paste it. You can get rid of this text if you want to, you don't really need it. Uh, and yeah, you know, if you want it like really small in the corner, like it used to be, you could do that. You could even shrink this thing down and show it that way. And you can see on my desktop, it of course shows you know the same all, but on the iPad, it's showing that updated look. And the same is gonna go for the time. If we were to take this, copy that, paste in here. Again, I'm gonna get rid of the time. And we could shrink this down. And we could even change the color. So I'm gonna select this, this whole group here, move this in here. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. Nah, let's keep it big. So with this, right now it's pink, but let's change some of the colors. So you can see it currently has radar six selected. So I'm gonna make this one blue. And now you can see our hours will update. If we go to five, let's make this one, let's say green. And so now when I select away, you can see on the iPad, it's totally updated that. And I could change this color too. Let's say we want this to be like a blue and this like a yellow. And that'll update on the tablet. And these are run by different scripts. And uh, that's a key thing because keeping your scripts organized is important. And I saw this as a question online before uh, because people were looking for how to color the script. Uh, and it could do it automatically in Touch OSC. It's just a tick of a box in your settings. So we're just gonna go up to, actually let's take a look, right? So if we select this, we look down here, yeah, it's not colored. So if we go to edit and then preferences, under editor, we're just gonna do code highlighting and you can see it's already updated that. Another cool thing you could add is under script, you know, add this uh, warning about if there are errors with your script, that could be really useful as well. So those are on, so if I was to you know, it should show me some issues with that. And there you go. There's something going wrong. There's a syntax issue. That's a nice helpful hint from Touch OSC. We're gonna take a look at some other scripts in a second, but I wanna go back to one of my favorite subjects and if you've been watching this channel for a while, you have seen a lot of local messages because they are, to me, a really easy way to accomplish a lot. And if you're unfamiliar with local messages, go check out one of my previous videos that is all about introducing you to local messages. But what we're gonna talk about here are a couple different things that include local messages. So I saw this question twice, once on the Facebook group and again on the Discord group. Speaking of which, if you're not involved in those communities, be sure to sign up. It's a great place where people are sharing different ideas, templates, and answering each other's questions. So let's say you have a pager and you want to change the page and you don't want to use the buttons that are already in the pager, you want to use an additional button. That's really easy to do with a local message, no scripting required. So let's add a pager. 
Let's make this a little bigger. And here is our pager. And I want to add a button. And this is going to change what page we're on. So I'm going to select this, hold Alt, click on it, it turns yellow, and then drag that into our pager. And you can see it's added a local message down here and it does have selected pager two. So if I was to push that button now, nothing's going on, but we're gonna change from the touch value to the value of the page. So now when we push it, you can see as I'm ho holding it down, highlighting it basically, uh, it goes to number two. And that is because the pages are actually numbered zero, one, two. So if I was to change this to two, now I can see that it's highlighting the last page or tab, which is currently called three. So to make this less confusing for us, we're going to select this pager and we are going to change the names on this. So pages, easy to do, right? So this label here, we're gonna change it to test. And then this one, this last one, we'll change this to red. And let's make the first one blue. So right now when I push this, it's taking us to red. But when I let go, it's sending us back to blue. And that's because right now the trigger is on any. So if I was to change this to fall and I push this, nothing's going on. Why isn't anything going on? And that's because right now it's already on zero. So if I change this to rise, now it's going right to the second uh, <laughs> number two, which is also red. If I put this at number one, now it's going to test. So this is one way you could do it with rise and impact this number, or you could set it to fall and you could play with it with this number. So using these local messages is a great way to have a button change something else for another button. But oftentimes you'll run into these duplicate message issues. And I've seen questions about that in the past as well. And oftentimes that is just caused by what your trigger is at. So if it's set to any, it's gonna send when you push and let go. So you'll wanna change that to just one of those, rise or fall. And we could see this a little more clearly with a label. So if we add another button here, make this one green, and then we're gonna add a label. So if I select this, alt drag over here, we have this message. So we're gonna change this to value. So now when I push it, you know, it's going one when I'm holding it down and zero when I let it go. So that's why you wanna change from rise to fall or any, just so it's only sending it once. Otherwise, if you have this set up with a MIDI message uh, and you don't select one of these, you may duplicate saying that or sending that CC message or whatever it is. So this will make it a little easier. But perhaps you want to send two different messages at the same time to your DAW. So one thing that's really cool, if you're playing guitar and you're using guitar rig or anything else, you have a synthesizer that has a lot of different parameters, it can be really cool to change one parameter and then you could use something else to say, change that and another one at the same time. So you could think of it as grouping but in Touch OSC, when you group something, we're actually talking about how on the template, you're organizing everything into a group. So I like to call this coupling. So we're coupling different messages together uh, with local messages. So let's see this example with some radials. So I'm going to move this guy out of the way and add a radial. And let's make this one big. And then we're going to add another radial. And we're gonna make this one blue. And what we're gonna do is drag this right over here. So it kind of looks like it's within our other radial. And actually to make it look even cooler like that, I'm going to get rid of the outline. So now, if I was to move this blue one, you can see I can do that, or this red one. They're simple, uh, they, they work just as we expect. So let's add a label so we can see what we're doing here. I'm gonna copy and paste this over here. So our red one, 
And this is just for the purpose of kind of understanding what we're doing. We're going to call this, actually, let's call this distortion. All right, and then this label here, we're going to call this reverb. And this is going to be blue. So this is going to be, they're going to be matched to each other, right? So when I move the blue, I'm changing the reverb. When I move the red, I'm changing the distortion on my imaginary doll right now. So if we wanted them to send messages, right, we would add our uh, MIDI message just like normal. So let's call this one MIDI message 1-1. One, one, and then this one, we'll add that and call it, you know, MIDI 1-2. So then you'll have to link those up with whatever your system is, and that will change those parameters. So what we want to do is hold Alt, click this, drag this into our red one. So right now, it's not doing anything. But here on our message, if I add value to X, now it's going one for one, right? So let's say you wanted to turn the distortion up and you can do that independently, but you wanna do it with reverb and distortion at the same time, you could do that. But an additional way you could use that is to kind of set it to scale. So perhaps as you're turning up the uh, inside radial, you only want it to set at about 40% for the larger radial. Right, so what that looks like is here on our blue radial, we're going to take this and set this to 0.4, 40%, right? So now when I turn up this blue one, as I'm going up, the red or the distortion will max out at 40%, right? And I could still turn up the distortion more or turn it down, whatever, but the uh, inside parameter, this object is going to set it uh, kind of proportionally. Or if you wanna add another layer to this, let's move this over, let's add a button. All right, and let's make this purple because when you add red plus blue, you get purple. All right, so this button, I'm going to Alt, click this, and I'm gonna drag this one now into our center. So let's change this from touch to value. And right now when I push it, everything goes to max. But I want this to be a toggle, toggle press. So now, you know, I'm playing my instrument or whatever and I hit this and now everything will go all the way up. And I don't have to drag anything up. And still, I could impact what I'm doing here or set it back to zero. So what's cool about playing with things like this with your synthesizer or your guitar effects or really any of your effects in Touch OSC is that you can kind of produce your own pedal board. Uh, so think about your signal chain. Your guitar is going into you know, some direct box and then there's a whole bunch of plugins in your DAW and now you can control them with Touch OSC. So this is cool, right? With Touch OSC, you could have all of your different like standard set so you know you want some distortion like this uh, but then you want to change it for a different song so you know really simply with your ipad you could just set up a whole bunch of presets control them as you want maybe control multiple at the same time by coupling with local messages or use an additional local message to control multiple of them so it's almost like a local message signal chain so one local message impacting another impacting another so this is a really cool thing that I like to use when I'm recording or when I have something like a vocal booth set up and I want to not go back into the DAW and click around and change things. It's all set on the template. As I'm going, I can impact everything live. This is definitely something I like to put on a synthesizer as well to use reverb or an EQ filter. Maybe I want to use a low pass, high pass filter and I could change those proportionally, you know, turn them up, set, turn them down with the click of a button. So nice, really easy way to kind of save yourself time and clicks. Speaking of clicks, there's a way to see what the tempo is that you're you know, trying to play uh, with a tempo tab. And of course you could do this in most DAWs, it's just clicking and it'll you know, set whatever your metronome is in your DAW. But uh, there's a script that Felix came up with which is really cool and basically you can use a tap tempo in your uh, Touch OSC template to see what your tempo is. So I'm just gonna put this in here. Let's move all this stuff out of the way and I'm gonna paste this in. And in the information below is a link to the scripts that Felix has made, including this BPM tempo tap module. 
So right now, if I just click this, you can see it's showing. It takes a couple seconds, but now I'm at 130. Go really slow. And you can see what it's going to send you. So, you know, this could be maybe too small. If I select this and make this bigger, this is a group, as we can see here. So it's not impacting that. I have to double click in, then I'd have to move this stuff over. And then I could make this much bigger. So now as I click out, you can see I can impact this a little easier when it's a little bit bigger. Now this is not currently sending any information. I like to use this just for myself when I'm playing and I'm like, okay, I want it to be at this tempo. I'll just feel it out, tap it out, and then I have it and I could set it in my DAW. You could have a message in your DAW. You'd have to set up a system where this uh, label, which is receiving the text from the uh, tempo tap button, you would then have that label send information to your DAW. Now, not every DAW is going to be willing to receive that information. If you're with Ableton, you would probably need to set up some sort of Max for Live patch. Uh, and, you know, with Reaper, you'd have to set something up as well. So it's not going to do it automatically. I don't use it for that purpose. I just like to know uh, internally and not have to turn to my DAW. I can just do it really easily on my tablet. So this is just another way to kind of remove yourself from the desktop or the system that you're in and keep yourself kind of live and in the moment with the music that you're creating. So yeah, these are just some down and dirty quick tips for Touch OSC and hopefully they're helpful for you as a composer, sound designer or musician or however you're using Touch OSC. So hopefully you learned something like this video and you can subscribe to this channel. Did you know that? We do a lot more on this channel, taking a look at other things for you know music composition, uh, as well as the life of being a composer or performer. So be sure to click that button. And thanks for watching and I will see you next time.